For Crema Media's Polity, I'm Shannon DeRayhove. Author Dominique Boerter joins me in studio to discuss her book, False River, based on the true events of her childhood and the loss of her brother. Welcome, Dominique. Thank you very much, Shannon. Your book is profoundly personal, is a profoundly personal coming of age novel. Was it very difficult for you to write? It was very difficult to write. Um, but I think not necessarily because of what you call its profoundly personal nature, just because writing is hard. Um, I think it was Thomas Mann who said, um, writers are people who find writing hard. In fact, funnily enough, I think the profoundly personal nature of the material in some ways made it easier because that archive already exists in, the, in your imagination as a writer. Mm. And it also carries an emotional charge. Which, um, which is often what gives writing its vigor. The book is about your very close relationship with your brother Paul and his death. Was the writing of the book cathartic in terms of dealing with, it, with the grief of his death? I knew you were going to ask me this question. <laughs> and I think, you know, I think it's not a simple linear relationship. Grief plus writing yields catharsis. I think it's certainly true that when you, when you try and make something out of loss, you certainly go back into that experience of grief. You, you excavate it and you use it. Mm. Um, and, and that in, in and of itself was actually quite a painful process. But having finished the book, and this was quite a while ago that it happened, um, before my launch um, on Tuesday, my parents phoned me on Monday evening and they said they're standing at my brother's grave on the farm. And to me, that was a real moment of, 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 a, of, of a kind of a cathartic closure. Mm -hmm. I think that um, it, it's an opportunity to close a door gently that has previously been slapped sh or slammed shut in your face. Mm -hmm. The book um, reproduces the strong connection uh, both you and your brother had to the farm for mm -hmm. Jonskruen. A theme of the book seems to be provenance is destiny. Can you elaborate on that? You know, I think that the environment that you grow up in is a shell that shapes your consciousness. The languages that you hear, the smells, the music, the people, the food. So I think it makes an indelible mark on you. And whether you remain within it or you move away from it, you always take that with you. What is your connection to the family farm now? Does your family still live there? They do. My parents are still there. And my, my, brother, my younger brother, Christian, farms as well. Oh. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Do you visit there often? <laughs> we do. Oh, nice. We do. And yeah. it's not that far, so it's No, it's, nice. it's relatively close. Mm -hmm. Now, the experience of attending an English medium boarding school throws up issues of alienation and um, identity. Can you elaborate on this? And how do you view your parents' choice for your schooling years? You know, our parents were desperate for us to get away from Christian national education, which was what the government schools were at those, at the, during those times. So they really sought for us as an opportunity to sort of escape the clutches of the Bruder Bond and have a broader world. Um, having having done that, it was very it was a very traumatic and alien alien environment to enter. Funnily enough, um, there were other people from even more you know different backgrounds probably had far far more intense experience. But I I understand why they did it. Mm. Um, you know, th also at the same time, the, the government schools had excellent academic standards. They were, you know, within your community. They were not boarding schools. So there was definitely a loss, but also a gain. The lives of you and your family are inextricably linked to the history of South Africa and South Africa's socio-political landscape. How do you feel about the state of the nation today? And do you think we have learned to respect each other more? It's funny, I read a, a poem just before I came here with it that had this sort of rather haunting refrain, which is there there have always been travelers since the beginning of time, so why should I mourn? And I think that there's a, there's, there's a resonance in that for South Africans. I think <coughs> we, we, were, we were naive. I think we believed that when, when the good guys won, we were going to go back to a time where everyone can go and tend the vegetables. And that is not true. It's, it's, I think that, the, that, that, our, that our present is as complex as our past. Um, certainly, we've learned to respect each other more. Um, there's been an enormous change, and I think one can one experiences uh, this uh, just anecdotally as ordinary South Africans. One of the things I do find slightly worrying is that we continue to abuse language, that we us and them, mm. and it's a it's a very dangerous stupidity to assume that you can call something black thinking or white thinking and think that it that it means something. Mm. 
There is a phrase in your book where you say, my years stacked up like an anemic resume of conformity in my mind. Would you still describe yourself in those words? Well, you must remember it's a novel. Mm. <laughs> I think, funnily enough, Paul's choices were very conventional. I think it's an unimaginative way to destroy yourself, to choose drugs. Mm. And funnily enough, as a young child, you don't have that perspective, or rather as a teenager, and you imagine that it's something wild and dangerous and, and, and interesting. Mm. So perhaps I was wrong to make that assumption of myself then. Does that answer your question? It does. <laughs> <laughs> Did you rewrite the book in Afrikaans, or did you have it translated? I translated it. Oh. Yeah, the publisher felt quite strongly that because it was such an Afrikaans world that was being described, that it would work well in Afrikaans mm -hmm. as well. So um, I embarked on that Sisyphean task in a very short period of time. <laughs> well, it, uh, it, it obviously worked. <laughs> well, that remains to be seen. <laughs> Why did you feel it was important to write it in, in both languages? You know, if there's anything that, 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 that has come through for me through this process is how unbelievably important language is. And I think we're being very squanderous as South Africans to have the idea that we should all speak bad English as our national tongue. We must not neglect the many other languages that enrich our consciousness because they carry with it so much. And la uh, language is a magic carpet. And um, we mustn't jettison the richness of our linguistic heritage. Tell me, do you still bake and make homemade jams? No, <laughs> but I intend to. Okay. <laughs> Did you enjoy it very much? Well, you know, I think we grew up in a, in a, in a, in a different time where we, where we had these skills, mm. and now we're de-skilling ourselves and we've become the Woolworths generation. Mm. Um, and I think it's a terrible loss, actually. Mm. I mean, most of us can't even sew anymore. No, we don't sew, we all. don't cook, we don't kill. But we eat and we wear clothes and we do these things. So we've lost the relationship between our actions and the consequences. Mm, very true. Finally, can we expect any more books from you? You know, there's a cardinal rule, number one, in, in writing classes, which is you must show and not tell. <laughs> <laughs> so let's watch this space, if we may. I would like, I will do that. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Shannon. That was Dominique Boerter speaking about her novel, False River.